So Prabhupada kindly gives us what's the 16, because that's our Western training, you want to know information things and not so much how the whole thing works. But in any case, the 16 is the, the five gross elements, and then there's 11 more. Five working senses, five knowledge acquiring senses, and the mind. The 11 plus 5 is 16. So those are uh, Adi Bautika portion. Then there's the living entities and there's the demigods. So when the personality Godhead enters, they, then they can, the demigods can do their thing, the elements, can, the elements have potencies. The elements have the capacity to effectively distribute the modes of nature. By that I mean, for example, color. Studies have been done. Modern science studies have been done where color affects the modes of nature that you're experiencing. Certain colors promote goodness, certain colors promote passion, certain colors promote darkness, or one of ignorance. Although it's just matter, just a wall with some paint on it. But the modes of nature are acting through. It just don't matter. And we, we're conditioned by those things. The, the potency to do that comes from the personality of Godhead without which there's no potency to do anything. So the, the, the statement here, the main part of the purport is Shukadeva Goswami is appealing to the personality of Godhead to empower him, A and B, to speak properly and B, to influence <coughs> others who he wishes to influence. Because without <coughs> the potency of the personality of Godhead, just as elements of everything necessary for creation is there, but it can't happen without the potency of the personality of Godhead. So also knowledge can be there, but without the potency of the personality of Godhead, it's not going to be effective in doing anything. I mean, the, within the, 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 the vibration of Srimad Bhagavatam itself, just like within the potency of the Maha Mantra itself, all potencies are there. But the effect is going to be different depending upon who the chanter of that mantra is. Therefore, Prabhupada, when making his recording in New York City in 1968 or whatever it was, 69, some studio recording and chanting my Krishna mantra and other recordings, that little, you know, the, the chanting of the holy name should be heard as far as possible from the lips of a pure devotee. And then conversely, way over on the other side, it can have poisonous effects, just like milk touched by the lips of a serpent has poisonous effects. Chanting from a mayanadi is something that one should avoid, although it's the Maha Mantra it, or, or, or other mantra. Mantras have potencies, but the potency can be disturbed and act in a different way, depending upon the chanter. So he is the qualified speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, and his part of his qualification is he is understanding he is dependent. He's a, he's a dependent actor. He's a broadcaster, but for the effectiveness of his broadcasting, must be potency of the Supreme Lord carrying that sound vibration to its intended purpose. Just like in the beginning part at the end, Canto 1, before Sutta Goswami speaks, uh, there's, he offers prayers. That <coughs> Gada Saraswati and to the, the, the personality of Godhead that they may bless the speaking so he can speak it properly and it can have its effect. Narayanam namaskritam naram chayam naram 
Devim Saraswatim Vyasa. So, Tutotayam Pajir, Tutam Tayam Pudirayat. So, he's appealing, as here Shukadeva was saying, he is appealing to the personality of Godhead to be simply his instrument. And the message embedded within that is a devotee is never one who wants to take credit because they know they don't, they're just the instrument. Of course, the instruments get credit too. But the real credit goes to the wielder of the instrument. An example that Prabhupada would often give or sometimes give is a knife, a scalpel. It's an instrument for a surgeon. And the scalpel in the hands of a mischievous person can create great damage. And in the hands of a qualified surgeon can be very useful. So the instrument in, it, in itself is not good or bad. As devotees of Krishna, in and of ourselves, we're not good or bad. It's to what degree the, the submission to the personality of God that is there to be his instrument in the service, then there can be effectiveness greater or lesser. That's the message that Prabhupada wants us to receive in the purport. And Shukadeva Goswami is not doing this for a fact, it's just his nature, his qualification. Please remember, <coughs> back in Canto 1, this is Canto 2, it's understood that he was already Brahman realized. He's not, there's, for him, there's no false ego to be satisfied. There's no material desire to be satisfied, there's no wish to become appreciated by others, you know, things that inspire and motivate people that have a mix of purpose in life. Shukadeva Goswami has none of that. Still, he's cautious about anything other than the interest of the Supreme Court, that my interest be fully subordinated to the interest of the Supreme Court, that be, be his instrument. It's instructive to us to understand how we not just speak the message of the Bhagavatam, but how we do anything that we do, how we live our life. How we serve the community, or raise the family, or worship the deity, or cook the offering, or arrange the, the program, something, something. to Sunday school, just be an instrument. And the, the further we can get our, our the misconception, the ego conception, I'm the doer, I'm the doer, I'm creating the result. To the degree that that can be taken away from the heart, then it's going to be far more effective. Because then it's just Krishna's potency coming through fully. That's Sukadeva Goswami's special qualification. The next verse is he's going to appreciate his spiritual master. In this case, it was his father who heard, from whom he heard, she would bond with him. And it was realized as subject matter and fullness and then passed it on to Sukadeva who was speaking it so wonderful. Again, back there's the, the, the subject matter has its technical feature, but that shouldn't put us off. It's, it's, it's an important part of understanding our Vaishnav notion that nothing happens without the sanction of the Supreme Court. It's not, we've got this sentimental idea over here, really the scientists have the answer, we don't need God, but no, if we don't have that connect of how, how does matter do what it does and how the demigods do what they do and how the living entities do what they do, then we're still in the sentimental zone. I mean, there's faith and conviction in God, but not really, not really, not, not fully supported by 
transcendental knowledge. So one may or may not understand the details of all of that technology and how it works, but at least the principle with, with finer detail than God created everything in seven days and said it was good. It was good. And he said, let there be light. It was light. So, but by Icha Shakti, all kinds of things happen. But how does it happen? God would not be there. By the touch of spirit, it moves. And without the touch of spirit, it doesn't move. Just one <coughs> final point. For all of this <coughs> to happen, along with the glance of Mahavishnu, the living entities are sent into Pradhan and things differentiate. And the time energy. Because you need time to have activity. And very and with that time energy there's some potencies. Yana Shakti, Kriya Shakti, and Baba Shakti from the Upanishads it described. Now, if you were God and you wanted to withdraw the creation, how would you do it? You withdraw the time energy. You can do it. Just withdraw the time energy. The whole the whole thing collapses. Goes back and back and back and back and back and back and back to the Pradhan state. And living entities go back within the body of Mahavishnu. The show's over. For the same period as creation, and then again, the time energy is activated and it's time to creation again. So when did all of this begin? It, 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 it's endlessly in cycle. There's no beginning. This is the Vedic picture of time. Time is actually eternal. And creation is temporal. But even with the time energy, the personal presence of the personality of Godhead, Dharvadamsha Vishnu, entering within the universe, extending his potencies as he does, then it's possible. You can say, you know, again, the same point for our devotional service. The, the, the stage is set for us to engage in devotional service. Devotional service means that we understand, at least in theory, and then progressively more and more, we're not able to do anything without the sanction of the Supreme Court. Besides the blade of grass can move, we can't, we can't do anything in devotion for the personality of God without the empowerment to do so. So we're, we're, we're dependent. It's nice to be dependent. It's a, that's an absolute dynamic of loving exchange between the uh, servant of the master. So any uh, discussion? Did I have a question? You're formulating it. Is it? Do you have one? Okay. Yes. And he's doing everything. Since Brahma is the same creator, how do you work? How does which work? Yeah. How does I couldn't understand your question. Brahma is yeah. Brahma is also creator. He's a creator, secondary. So how does it work? He gets the potency to do what he does. No, 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 no. It's like it's like a. He's an engineer. So 
I don't know so much about exactly how it worked, but suppose he, an engineer looked at the blueprint and then he, got, he has a contractor that get, gets, you know, puts the building together, for example. No, that's how it works. The ingredients, the creative impetus, the blueprint, the plan, the, the, the universal form is shown in its subtle feature to Brahma who gets it. He's got, you know, everything he needs. And then the realization of self, then he's got his service. He puts it together, he's the chief engineer. In that says the creator. But it's the sub-creator, like the contractor, or the chief engineer that takes the plan and put, put, moves the plan forward. He didn't make the plan. He didn't make the ingredients. He didn't get the energy to do it. The intelligence to do it, the understanding of who he is and what he's supposed to be doing. All of that was given to him. Then he just becomes the instrument to do it. And his one, one of the prayers that he offers later on in the second canto, when coming before Lord Vishnu, before the creation begins, he asks for the benediction, let me not become mistaken through false ego to think I'm the creator. Because it's all being carried out by your potency and I'm the instrument of your potency. But I know there's a tendency to think I did it. I'm just the instrument. Does that answer your question? Yes? Okay. Yes? I'm wondering, do we have any part? Turn the volume up. Do we have any part active or passive in, in some of the, the new aspects of creation? I'm thinking like Devishan does all this work with Kelsey Thomas. He does all this work, but? With, with, to, to, uh, to grow Kelsey. To grow Kelsey. So I'm not sure what you mean in, in that, using that example, the difference between active and passive. We're performers. There's five factors of action, chapter 18. One of them is we make some endeavor. So that much we can be active. We make some endeavor. But without the other four, nothing's going to happen. And ultimately, it's the, the sanction of the Supreme, Ishwara. Without the sanctity of the Supreme, nothing can happen. You can make all the endeavor that you like. Now the Supreme Lord likes Tulsi, so he's going to help the endeavor. <laughs> but, something else may happen. But they can't obstruct unless Krishna sanctions. Now, I'm not sure what you meant by passive because we're the non doer in the sense that we're not the controller, but we have a role to play. But the role to play is not a passive role, it's an active role. We don't lie down in a hammock and sip lemonade and say, I, you know, I'd like Tulsi to grow. We're not passive, we're active. But dependent. Purification. 
hear, you hear it and hear it and hear it and just keep saying, saying the Hare Krishna movement and hear it again and again and again. And it will start to come in, oh, that's important. <laughs> then you start to meditate on it and then, you know, you'll catch yourself moving between this and that. And knowledge will help you go to the right side. And the other one, and that's blissful and the other is miserable. And it really messes things up in terms of the service and the relationships and your consciousness. It's really, you know, signals are given by the kindness of Krishna. Don't go there. But it starts with hearing, which is a good place to start. And then that hearing continues to cleanse and guides our life and devotion until it comes directly from super soul spontaneously. Bodhi, Tadami, Bodhi Yoga, Tam, Yenama Bodhi And that's really nice. We're not eligible for that so much yet. Because the eligibility is the Tesham Satata Yuktana Bajitam Priti Kurkam. We're going to be speaking about this on the Sunday program one of the chapter Sloki verses. I had a very nice discussion <coughs> over the New Year's weekend. I was with, had the good fortune of being with Dravida, who said, yeah, I'm gonna, each year I'm going to be making a visit to, to Tucson and Phoenix. You know, he's, so we, and then I, we had this, just kind of came up as a discussion on the, the, the similarity and difference between bodhi and bhakti. Because they're in one sense synonymous, but there's also obviously some difference because there's two terms. So we'll discuss some of that on Sunday. We need bhuti to have our bhakti successful. Our activity, engaging the senses and the objects of the senses for the pleasure of Krishna. We need bhuti to guide that. And so that's in they're inseparable. But that is similar to the question you're asking. As you know, I, Basically, I know the philosophy, but it's really easy to get caught up in the doership mentality and think I did it, and then people say, oh, you did a good job, and I think, yeah, I did a good job. No, I'm Krishna's mercy. But I'm thinking, yeah, I did a good job. It's our you know, long-standing involvement in that, or trying to be the enjoyer of that, or instead of the unalloyed servant of Krishna. Where are all the difference? Where are all the difference? So they, and how do we get there? It's, it's purification, striving by right means. And striving by right means doesn't just mean what you do, it means the consciousness behind what you do. It's the booty. Yeah, or the, the mood of wanting to please Krishna by my existence. Let my existence be pleasing to Krishna. It's a nice thought. Then what, what, do you, what do you work on? That passive is active. How do I work on? So it's start with the hearing process and let the hearing enter the heart. And then guide your life. Shrivanti Gayanti Granati Sadhana. not from the head and from the heart. Purification. Gradual. Gradual only because we're attached. It can happen instantly, but the potency is there, but we're attached to being enjoyers of stolen property. Thank you.
Bhagavad Gita.